noticed throughout your IFR training that interpreting the weather and having a good idea as to what the weather is doing is very important. Now, yes, it was important in your VFR days, and it will continue to be so if you fly VFR, but the considerations once we hit the IFR world become even more important. So in this section, we're going to take a look at some of the considerations when it comes to weather once you reach your flight test. Now, a lot of these considerations, of course, are going to be needed as you continue to fly. One of the hardest things about the IFR flight test is getting a good feel for that weather. You need to know where the weather is, where it's going, what it's likely to be doing when you get to your destination, but you also need to know much more than that. You need to know, well, if I get to my destination and I have to go to alternates, what's the weather likely to be like at the time that I arrive at my alternates? There's just so much more to work through. And this is partly where we start to separate the amateurs from the professionals. Because those who have really spent a lot of time seeking to understand the underlying principles of weather and what drives weather tend to do a little bit better. You're going to find on your IFR flight test that it's not just strictly being able to read the acronyms that are all over the place on these maps and on these TAFs and on these METARs. It's going to be telling what the weather is likely going to do and then justifying your actions and your decisions based on what you know the weather is working through. Okay, so let's kind of start this section by just a review of what we do to obtain the weather. Now, as mentioned, a big part of your flight test is going to be, well, that examiner sitting there listening as you explain what the weather is doing and as you explain the justification for your various decisions. What's it going to be like when I come in and I do my approach? What's the likelihood of the success of the approach? What about during the on-route phases of flight? Am I likely to be flying in cloud? What's the chances of icing, turbulence? Maybe I can get through layers. Perhaps I can get above it at a certain altitude. So you're going to see that this is so much more an exercise in telling the examiner what the weather is doing than it is simply reading the METAR or the TAF or the GFA. You know, often we'll have students who will come in and they'll sit there and they'll just read the METAR. Okay, well, you should have that level of understanding already. I am not interested in hearing you read out verbatim what the METAR or the TAF or the GFA is saying. But what I am interested in is you being able to look at that particular weather product pick apart what is really important and then put it into terms that fit what you might need to do in terms of your approaches, your alternates, and your on-route flying. So you need to integrate all of the different forecasts into a comprehensive picture of the weather. Not only that, but as you look at this weather and explain the weather and your decisions, you're also going to have to consider limitations. IFR flying still will have personal limitations. There will also be, of course, legal limitations. For instance, when we're selecting our alternates or maybe when we're doing our approach. We may also have limitations that our airplane has. For instance, crosswinds, tailwinds. And what about the passenger comfort? trying to avoid areas of extreme turbulence. That is something important as well.